Hello everyone, my name's Emily and today we are going to be reviewing Emily Henry's funny story. Quick disclaimer, the first part of this review will be spoiler free and then the second part will contain spoilers and I will let you know once we get into that. So if you don't wanna be spoiled, you can hop right off and watch this later. But let's get right into it. This was one of my most anticipated reads of 2024. I almost forgot what year it was for a second, I'm about to say 2025. I'm, it's fine. Emily Henry takes us through a very dramatic event, um, sort of events, where we have Daphne and Miles very unconventionally finding roommates and comfort in each other. Both of their respective previous significant others profess their love to each other and now they have found themselves in this very interesting situation from kind of both of them navigating the breakup and really the two of them are the only ones that kind of really understand what they can be going to they learn a lot from each other about how to be very vulnerable, be able to reflect on who they were with that significant other. Something really great about this book is how it kind of explores how we see ourselves in relationships and something I felt was a very common theme. This is not a spoiler, but oh my gosh. I think it does a really great job of reflecting on accepting the type of love we think we deserve and it dives really into that. And essentially primary focus of the plot is them getting over their breakups, but also kind of diving a little bit deeper into why are this they this way. There's some history that comes up on both of their sides that kind of explains a little bit why they might receive or act receive love or act the way they do. A little bit of trauma that they talk about a little bit that they have a really great time reflecting on and diving a little bit more into. The main character Daphne, we follow her, is a children's librarian. Classic Emily Henry. Would this be an Emily Henry book if one of the main characters didn't have some type of love or connection to books? Probably not and we love her for it. Daphne finds herself in Waning Bay, Michigan. She has to challenge herself and kind of previous friendships and it's just a really great reflection piece in my opinion breakups are never easy i think this book does a really great job of kind of exploring that and how we might accept love differently based off of who we are and our past traumas and whatnot it also wouldn't be an emily henry book without the piece of family involved i'm not going to talk too much about it from a spoiler free standpoint, but there are some really great conversations and reflections to be had when we're kind of looking at our family members and how that affects who we are and the love we accept as well. You will like this book if you just got broken up with and you're looking for love or you're looking for a healing process or if you're someone that maybe even associate yourself or your worth with the people that you're in relationships with this will be a really great book for you i gave this book five stars something about emily henry's writing i just feel she does such a great job of diving into the whys behind the character and what kind of drives their motivation and actions the best way i could describe this book is it felt like a warm hug or like I was being swaddled in a blanket and I felt safe. But at the same time, I was being swaddled so much that I didn't mean, did you guys hear, did you hear that? I was swaddling so hard my thumb cracked. But it's swaddling you so much that it's putting strain on your heart and it hurts. I feel like that is the best way to describe what I experienced with this book. And if you're a fellow romance lover, if you like deep reflection and kind of looking a little bit more within of why we do the things we do, why we accept the love we think we deserve, you will love this book. Could not recommend more. I will note this is not my favorite Emily Henry book. I'm gonna do a ranking of them so far, but it's definitely one of the top ones. So let's get into the spoilers. So if you don't wanna get spoiled, hit that save button, watch us later after you read the book or you're okay being spoiled. 
Otherwise, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna talk about the plot. We're gonna talk about the character development. We're gonna talk about some of my favorite quotes. And then we're gonna talk about the book cover. Prepare for a roller coaster because that's how I felt reading this. So our book starts off with essentially Daphne telling the story of how her and Peter met. Peter is her ex-fiance at this time. But I just want to kind of talk right off the bat about how Peter breaks the news to Daphne that they're breaking up. This might be a little bit of a tangent. I'm going to try to hold myself back, but just the start of this was wild to me. So Peter and Daphne are engaged. Peter goes on his bachelor party. And it's important to note his childhood's best friend's name is Petra. And she's also there. Peter comes back and tells Daphne, hey, Petra confessed her love to me. And I realize I'm in love with her and we're gonna break up and call off this wedding now and I'm gonna go be with her. Let's break down the insanity of this. You are engaged to someone else. You spent a lot of money on this wedding and the bachelor party and she bought her dress and there was a lot of money spent toward this wedding. And you're just going to go break off an engagement to someone you could see yourself with for the rest of your life. Peter told Daphne consistently through the relationship, he never had feelings for Petra, it's not like that, whatever, whatever, whatever. Clearly, he was wrong or he's a little liar. Then he calls off the wedding and Daphne reacts very reasonably in my mind. I'm like, and she's like swearing and yelling at him. I'm like, yes, me too, what the heck? I like can't get over this. Like just thinking about that. Okay, I need to move on because I'm fixating on this way too much. But anywho, and then, oh, and then, okay, the last part of it is he's like, we're going away for a week to give you time to move out and she's gonna move in here in this house I bought for us. Crazy. But I'm like, okay, fine. If he was gonna do this during the engagement, was it ever a stable, safe relationship in the first place? Probably not. And that's fine, whatever. But then from Petra's side of it, Petra is in a relationship with Miles, our male main character. They've been together for three years. She goes on this bachelor party. She proclaims her love for Peter, her childhood best friend. What was she expecting would happen if he said, I don't reciprocate your affection? Was she just gonna go settle for Miles? At the bachelor party, like, he had gotten engaged way before that. You could have said something. You could have said something while he was just in a relationship, but you decide at the bachelor party, oh yeah, I'm in love with you. Crazy, crazy. crazy. Let's move on. So essentially, Miles and Daphne become roommates. They kind of help each other out through a breakup. It's like really tough to read about, I will note. But also like, when is a breakup ever easy to read about, you know? But I really loved seeing Daphne and Miles' friendship develop, kind of them seeking comfort in each other and also being like, what the heck, that was totally screwed up what they did to both of us and both of them kind of feeling like, well, did I do something wrong? Was something wrong with me? And when the other ones there to hold them accountable, like, no, it was not something you did. It was a really screwed up thing for them to do. Like, okay. And then they get engaged. Petra and Peter get engaged after a month of their new relationship. And then they invite Miles and Daphne. That's crazy. The audacity. And it's like known that these two are like known to be well liked and they want everyone to like them. So maybe they did that as a courtesy, but I'm like, that's crazy. And I was rooting for them to RSVP yes. I'm like, yes, do it be spiteful. And they did, I love that for them. As kind of their friendship develops, Daphne's like, well, she's reflecting on, I moved to Waning Bay, Michigan for Peter. His family's here. Um, I found a job here. I left all of my friends in, I think it's either Virginia or West Virginia. And she's kind of having this existential crisis of, oh my gosh, 
I just did all of this for some guy. Who am I without him? And she's realizing I don't really have any friends outside of him. There was like one couple friend that was, that kind of was like not trying to play Switzerland and not take a side in this, even though it was very clear who was in the wrong here. But she's kind of having this existential crisis, but she loves her job. She's a children's librarian. She loves it. She loves storybook time when she gets to read to the kids. And there's this big readathon that she's kind of working towards at the end of the summer where it's this huge reading event and she wanted to introduce it to this library. And that's kind of the only thing keeping her there. But as time goes on and her and Miles's friendship develop, Miles starts to kind of like want to convince Daphne to stay and he's like let me show you around and the little like farmer's market loving small local produce cutesy shop part of me was loving this he was like showing her his lavender guy his cherry guy his honey there was there were like all these little like essentially my brain is not working today. Vendors, like providers, distributors that Miles had a connection with. Miles kind of has a bunch of different jobs depending on the season in Winning Bay, but he's primarily a bartender right now. So he kind of outsources and knows all the people and Miles is just so loving and so fun and genuinely kind. I was literally like reading about this. I'm like, wow, I could learn something from Miles because I am not as forgiving and just open arms, like open hearted, open. What's the word I'm looking for? I'm not as willing to just open my arms to someone. But essentially what causes them to fall into this fake dating situation is the invitation to the wedding. Peter calls Daphne is kind of like pitying her like, oh, by the way, you don't have to come. We were just kind of doing it because you seem so sad and alone. And then she's like, oh yeah, I'm dating someone. And he's like, well, you didn't, we didn't get a plus one. And she's like, oh yeah, I'm, and they actually already got an invite, it's Miles. So then they start fake dating. And it's more of like, it's more to be a little bit more unforgiving and spiteful and cause jealousy. Hey, I'm here for the drama. I'm here for the drama. They kind of hang out a little bit more and this fake dating starts crossing the lines of like, oh, are these feelings more genuine? And there's this like a little bit of a struggle of a miscommunication where Daphne is like, wow, I'm having these genuine feelings for Miles, but he's only doing it to get back at Petra and there's this like back and forth constantly where they don't really know how the other one's feeling but they still want to hang out and it's something that they just kind of work through which was a little bit frustrating at time but i think that emily henry did a really great way of making it realistic that's something that i felt was pretty consistent throughout this book was the conflicts and the way about communication felt very real. I feel like oftentimes in romance books, sometimes things are exaggerated a little bit to make a point or to cause more drama. And I, I love the drama. Emily Henry just did it in a way that felt very real. And I was like, okay, I can see how this is going. And she also dove so deep into the characters that it made sense with how they kind of had these conflicts. All right, so eventually they profess their feelings. And I want to finish talking about the romance and then I want to talk about the family aspect because those were the two biggest points in my mind that kind of stuck with me. Their biggest conflict was, I think, they sleep together for the first time and then Miles was supposed to pick up Daphne from her shift at the library and he doesn't show up and he kind of like shows up an hour too late. It's like raining and she's like, don't even like, like whatever she's like you ran away when you got scared and i for reasons we're gonna talk about with her dad she's like i should have expected that from you this big conflict this is controversial based off kind of what i've seen online peter and petra broke up 
because they realized that they jumped into a relationship too fast. They jumped into an engagement too fast. And then Peter was kicking Petra out of the house and Petra called Miles and Miles helped her move out. And that's why Daphne thinks he didn't show up. It was kind of part of the reason why he wasn't as available, but we find out later dad that he was actually chewing out Daphne's dad for being a poor parent. From that conflict standpoint, I feel like everyone's very fixated on that, where it's like, oh my gosh, Miles went back to Petra so quickly. Oh my gosh, Miles like does, is still in love with Petra. And I think something really important to know is because of Miles' traumatic past and just who he genuinely is as a person, he's just so kind and will help people without hesitating. And I'll also note that how it came out is he was like, I, don't, I didn't have feelings for her. I accidentally told her that I loved Daphne first, but I, I think he's just very vulnerable and doesn't know how to express negative feelings very well because of his past. So that conflict I was fine with. I feel like people didn't love it. I felt like it made sense from a Miles background and a Daphne background with their family, what happened. Let's talk about the family aspect and then we'll get a move on into the quotes. I really loved how Emily Henry talks about family. Family means a lot to me and seeing her kind of explore in different ways throughout her books has been such a pleasure. The two kind of defining family components in this are Daphne's dad is kind of like a deadbeat dad. Daphne's mom is a strong independent woman who taught her daughter how to be a strong independent woman. And it's kind of always been Daphne and Holly, that's Daphne's mom, from the beginning against the world. Daphne has a really great relationship with her mom. I love that for her. And something Daphne struggles with is not expecting anything from her dad. Her dad kind of pops up here and there and she gets hope that he'll be more present and then he lets her down. Something I will note is him and his new fiance just showed up in Waning Bay, Michigan, like, not unannounced and i was like bro where's your self-awareness like you've been in and out of this kid's life so inconsistently and you're just gonna show up whatever go to therapy sometimes a lot can be solved when you go to therapy go to therapy go to therapy i've been to therapy three times There's still a lot to improve but i've been to therapy three times go to therapy daphne's dad anyway but essentially Daphne expecting too much from her dad really affects her relationships and overall and especially with Miles when she felt like he, he let her down she was like wow I should have expected that because I put too much faith into people I love and then they let me down. From a Miles standpoint Miles also has a very tragic history with his family. His mom was incredibly abusive she kind of made everything about her. If everything wasn't happy, go lucky rainbows and shun sunshine, she would take it out on everyone else and make it about her. And his dad was very avoidant and absent and really did not help the situation at all. And this affects Miles a lot because he feels like he can't express those negative feelings, which is really hard to hear. But also I'm really glad that Emily Henry continues to talk about men's mental health and whatnot because something that doesn't get talked about as much. But that essentially makes sense why Miles felt that maybe he wasn't good enough for Daphne and kind of how that went. Overall, the plot was great. I had a really great time reading this. It was very stimulating and I would say medium paced. It was pretty, I would say more probably character driven than plot driven just because it was them kind of exploring that post breakup life and kind of how they were handling it. I'm gonna talk about some quick quotes and we'll talk about the characters and then we'll talk about the cover. If that was not the order I said before, I'm sorry, but we'll be quick. This is what feels right. First quote I want to mention is, this is in the beginning when Daphne is just kind of introducing Miles and Petra. But here she's talking about Miles and we have Petra's boyfriend. Miles had not been invited to the bachelor party. Peter didn't 
hate Miles. He just didn't think Miles was good enough for Petra because Miles is a stoner without a college degree. Petra is also a stoner without a college degree, but I guess it's different when you're a perfect 10 with a picturesque family and a well padded bank account. Then you're not a stoner, you're a free spirit. This right off the bat is when I knew I didn't like Peter. Like the double standards are so annoying when literally Miles and Petra have very similar backgrounds and he's being all hoity toity because Miles doesn't come from a ton of money. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. We're valid. Next quote I wanted to mention is just because this is my same exact thought where Peter is recounting how him and Petra came together and they're staying together and he's saying like there was too much they had too much to drink everyone went home but we stayed back to sober up one thing led to another god i'm sorry but i don't want to hurt you but and daphne goes you cheated on me and he goes no it wasn't like that where she told me she's in love with me and i realized i am too in love with her i mean maybe not physically cheating I don't know if I would constitute this as cheating, but there's definitely some weird emotional developments there. Peter. Peter's the enemy. Of, Peter's the villain of this book. Ah! Okay, this next part, I don't need to quote that. The next part was just talking about how they got married after a month. That's crazy. Crazy. Okay, one of my next favorite quotes was Daphne was deciding to just try on her dress for one last time for someone to see it before she got rid of it. And she's trying to take it off and it goes, it won't budge and the bodice feels tighter than it did a minute ago. The more I mess with the zipper, the more panicked I become. The skin feels tender under the seams. My rib cage hurts. I can't get a good breath and the dress is stuck. And at this point I was like, yes, Miles is gonna have to help her take it off. The tension, yes. Tension and drama, count me in. My last quote I wanted to quickly bring up. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's just so cute. It's so cute. This is when Miles and Daphne are moving into their new home together and there's someone new they're talking to and Julia, Miles' sister goes, and the time you told your ex-fiance you were dating his new fiance's ex-boyfriend, Julia puts in. And they go, what's this now? All this sets the cheese board on the counter. Harvey didn't tell you, Ashley says. I don't gossip about the staff, he says, with false and un unconvincing sternness that doesn't hide his grin. Miles slips his arms around my waist, the wood smoke and ginger smell folding around me, my heart pattering at the sound of this feeling of him kissing the side of my neck. I let myself lean back into him the best feeling in the world, at least the best feeling that's appropriate to have in front of my mother, of your mother. You really don't know this already, I guess, Elda? She shakes her head. It's how Daphne and I got together, Miles, his arms tight around me. Elda claps her hands together. Oh, I love a good knee cute. That, let's hear it. I crane my neck over my shoulder to look at him. His dimples sink into his beard and it feels like my heart is, un my heart is unzipping, stepping out of its cow skin, a glowing sunlight thing. Funny story. Dot, 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 he says and he doesn't go on just washes me and waits he knows how much i love to say it i felt like this was the perfect ending because it starts with daphne talking about how much she loves how peter tells their story and it ends with one a little name drop funny story but also miles knowing daphne better where she likes to tell the story and she actually genuinely enjoys telling it. It was just so cute. I was like, oh my gosh, it's fine. It's fine. All right. Let's get to the characters. I really like Daphne. I feel like she was a very complex female main character. I love a cynical romantic. I feel seen. I feel seen. It was really refreshing to see someone that just wasn't all Oh my gosh, I love everyone. Love is amazing. She was like constantly a skeptic and not and always second guessing and questioning people's intentions. I feel seen. I love that she's a little librarian. That's so cute. And I love that she was able to kind of stand up to her dad eventually and be like, hey, you were a deadbeat dad and you kind of suck. So if you want to have a continued relationship, you're going to have to try better. Miles was such a sweetheart. I feel like I talked about this already, but his trauma responds to how kind of 
his parents treated him growing up makes sense with how he was raised but i'm really glad that he kind of got to the place where he was okay complaining he was okay expressing those negative feelings and he just felt a little bit more comfortable and confident in himself it was really enjoyable to read about and i love that for him i also really liked ashley ashley was one of the other librarians that worked with daphne she was just so spunky and fun it was also really enjoyable to read about a single mom who still makes the most of it still is able to have a love life and enjoy herself and find new friendships and kind of explore that part of life as well because she's 43 and she's still making friends and like yeah good for her as, as she should i love that for her julia miles's sister was so fun and spunky i loved her so much as well it was really interesting to kind of see how her relationship with her parents and miles expressed kind of who she was i wish we kind of got a little bit more of her but she was fun and i loved her daphne's mom all i gotta say is we love a woman who raises a strong independent woman all i gotta say there her relationship with daphne was very heartwarming and sweet and i'm really glad she was someone that used to like find her worth with the partners that she had in life and it was really refreshing to kind of find that as life goes on she's okay not being in a relationship and finding happiness elsewhere because you don't need to be in a relationship to be happy daphne's dad sucks i don't really know much more i have to say about that i don't know his backstory very well but the fact that he told his daughter about his new engagement through a birthday card to her really sucks and then just showing up to the town she's now living in with no notice and then also leaving with no notice at all really sucks so like go to therapy dude and do some self-reflection that's all i gotta say no more notes okay this is gonna be a quick one starfire daphne's dad's new fiance she was fun she was cute a little bit too much faith in, faith in her psychic but i will know every time i read her name all i could think about was teen titans like starfire Starfire, what are you doing here? Ariana, what are you doing here? Okay, anyway. Miles and Julia's parents, I don't really have much to say about them. I feel like I kind of talked about them already. The way they handle themselves as parents was not it to be short and sweet. I feel like there is a lot of potential for therapy there as well. And it's just like from like the dad standpoint to watch your partner hurting your children like emotionally and mentally how can you sit by and be okay with that that's so harmful and damaging all right i don't want to go too far into this but let's talk about peter and petra one i thought there was gonna be a joke about peter and petra and how close their names were and how maybe they're related i was waiting for that joke but maybe it's no longer tasteful i don't know Peter sucks. As soon, <laughs> as soon as I found out he drinks wheatgrass shots willingly, I'm like, red flag, red flag, run far away. Him on his high carb, low, oh, it's not. He would never do a high carb diet. High protein, low carb diet. Sick man, get those gains. The audacity to propose to someone, I'm very also financially driven so like the audacity to then spend all that money on a wedding coming up and then you leave someone for something you didn't have feelings for yeah okay yeah. buddy okay let's move on and then petra this might be a controversial opinion i did not like petra i know like her whole thing is everyone loves her and she's so lovable and carefree and everyone loves her so much to profess your love to someone at their bachelor party, you waited that long, is not it. And I know they were like, oh, she didn't know what she had until it was lost. Okay, yeah, no, no. But then also like, was she gonna settle for miles? Don't put miles through that. Like if you're gonna do that, break up with someone first and then go profess your love. Do that first, oh my gosh. I didn't like her. I did not like them either. They are meant to be, and then they called off their wedding because they realized they did it too quickly. Who would have thought? Anyway, 
And then the townspeople of Waning Bay, their little like poker group and all the little like farmers and distributors and suppliers. It was so cute. It was so cute and it made me want to go to a little town and get all the local produce and whatnot. It was just so cute. Oh my gosh. All right, we're finishing it up, I promise. Let's talk about the book cover. I think this book cover is so cute. I'm a big fan of the 2D characters with like some descriptive features kind of freaks me out when they have none. The Crocs, we love a we love Miles with his Crocs, so cute. And then we just it's so pretty. I love this color. So I would describe this as a purple cover. Yeah, this is purple. My favorite part though is this. Look at the oranges on here. I'm obsessed. They're so cute. I'm obsessed. But anyway, that's my review of Funny Story. Like I said, I gave it five stars. Loved it. Wasn't my favorite Emily Henry book, but it was still really great. I enjoyed it. I'm going to do a video in the future ranking my favorite Henry books, so definitely make sure to stick around so you see that. But overall, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for hanging around. There will be many more reviews to come but this was fun let's do it again soon make sure to like this video guys it helps me a lot make sure to comment below if you also read it let me know your thoughts i want to hear i love talking about books i love talking about books so much comment literally if you like didn't like it if you did like it if you like the oranges oh my gosh comment what you want to see me review next kind of other videos you want to see whatever it is just let me know make sure to subscribe so that you can hang around and continue on this fun little book club journey we have going on together and then turn on bell notifications so you don't miss any notifications from yours truly and i think last but not least follow me on instagram at dietitian emk where i overshare a little bit too much of my life and i post all the behind the scenes of whatever is going on thanks for tuning in guys this was so fun i will catch you next week otherwise until then stay safe and we'll see you soon